Welcome back. Um, this is Jingo Nelly, and I'm going to be taking you through the single and the complete records. This is my part three, and uh, we had completed step four, and we are looking at a situation where you are being given a gross profit margin and a gross profit markup. Now with this. These ratios help you to determine the cost of which determine, help you to determine the cost of sales, which later help you to determine the sales and the purchases. And with these sales and purchases, it's what you put in the income statement. So, what I want you to know is that uh, with the gross profit margin, the gross profit margin, it deals with sales. Now with this, if gross profit margin from the formula, gross profit margin is equal to gross profit times 100 out of the sales. And with the, mark, uh, with the markup, it's equal to gross profit out of cost of sales times 100. So for the gross profit markup, it is to do with the cost, it is to do with cost of sales. And for the margin is to do with sales as so this is what i had listed here <coughs> gross profit margin deals with sales and markup deals with cost of sales basing from the two formulas so from there uh i'm i'm i'm, I'm requiring you to follow what i'm pointing at so that you follow up very well so for cost of sales it's equal to from the formula cost of sales is equal to opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock and again from the formula if you are told you want to determine sales sales is going to be the gross profit uh, equaling to sales minus cost of sales whereby you have to make it interchange whereby cost of sales will cross and go the other side so sales being equal to gross profit plus cost of sales so you after you knowing that we move on to the next thing so here i'm having example three given opening stock which is this amount and purchases this amount closing stock of this amount gross profit margin of 10 percent then here i'm having a solution first of all i'm going to first determine my cost of sales so cost of sales is equal to opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock so i just come and i insert the 2000 here a i mean the 200000 i put it here then the 800000 here and then my closing stock which is the 100000 so giving me a cost of cost of sales equaling to 900000 so from that i can go ahead and determine my i can go ahead and determine uh, the gross profit so basing from the previous formula gross profit margin is equal to gross profit out of sales I remember I told you with margin it's concerned with sales so if this is a 10 percent 10 percent of this which is this is equal to gross profit out of sales so if I um, to cross multiply this is what I will get gross profit will be equal to 10 percent of the sales so meaning that gross profit from the formula gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of sale it's going to be equal to so this gross profit is going to equate to this so meaning that this gross profit is is 10 percent of the sales so which is equal to sales minus cost of sales so from that uh interchange whereby um, whereby this will go this side crossing the equal sign and this will come this side so cost of sales is equal to sales minus now this 10 percent i'm going to say and uh, 10 percent divided by 100 giving me 0 0.1 of sales so that i say cost of sales is equal to now here there's an invisible one which is going to be here so one sales minus 0 0.1 sales so i've changed the percentage to a decimal so that it can i can easily solve it out with this one so cost of sales is going to be equal to one minus 0 0.1 which is going to give me 0 0.9 of sales so 900 900 000 is equal is going to equal to 0 
of cells so divide by 0 0.9 is by 0 0.9 so my cells is going to be 1 million so that's how i find the that's how i find cells using the gross profit margin because it relates to the cells from this formula so moving on to the next so how am i going to determine my uh, my cost of sales using a gross profit markup now with gross profit markup i told you it deals with what cost of sales or the cost so given the sales as this then profit markup of 40 percent so i'm going to be having a solution whereby i'm going to say markup is equal to gross profit out of cost of sales so this is going to be the markup is going to be 40 percent which is going to equal to the gross profit out of cost of sales so from this i'm going to cross multiply so gross profit is going to equal to 40 percent of the cost of sale so from there from the previous formula it's going to be gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of sales so after that i just come and i equate this to this i'm going to say my gross profit is going to be equal to this so 40 percent of the cost of sales is going to equal to sales minus cost of sales so sales is going to equal to uh i make sure that this also crosses the equal sign goes this side so it's going to be 40 percent plus the cost of sales mm? so meaning i just come and i said my sales is going to be this amount here i bring it here it's equal to cost of so i told you this figure i change it to a decimal so that i can equate it to invisible one which is always here so 0 0.0.4 0 .4 plus the one uh, it's going to give me 1.4 then uh, uh, times cost of sales. So divide by 1.4 divided by 1.4, giving me this amount. When I divide the one, th when I divide this amount, divide by the 1.4, it's going to give me cost of sale equaling to uh, 110 million. So this will be my cost of sales, and that's how I determine cost of sales using a profit markup so it depends on what what you have been given in the question if they say markup just know you're talking it's going to be concerned with cost of sales if they say margin it's going to be dealing with what sales so that is that uh moving on uh in case you're having uh uh goods lost goods lost or goods stolen but not insured so now for this the business bears the risk which must be taken taken in the income statement now this loss must always be taken in the profit or loss so what happens when your goods are stolen or they are lost so you're going to debit and credit so you're going to be debiting the profit and loss account which is the income statement and you're going to be crediting the trading account what do these two mean when they say debit the profit and loss account or the income statement like for debiting this is what is going to occur when they said debit if i told you to extract an income statement you reach uh, at the extent of doing the 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 gross profit now from gross profit you say add other incomes then you go to gross income um then uh, you get to less operating expenses now in the operating expenses you're going to that's when you're going to less the stolen or lost goods Meaning that when they say debit the profit and loss or the income statement, they mean subtract. They mean subtract when they say debit the income statement. Now, when they say credit the, tra the trading account, it it's going to mean that if at all for crediting, if at all you are to extract the trading account, the trading account starts from the sales up to a gross profit. So if at all you are having sales, less cost of sales, then in the cost of sales you are having opening stock, then you add the purchases, then you are going to less the stolen or lost goods because when they say credit the trading account they also mean minus the trading account so the first portion of the income statement or because it's called the trading account and profit or loss uh st statement so then the the first the, the the first one uh so this will be the meaning of you debiting and crediting the profit and loss account and uh this will be the meaning sorry this will be the meaning for you for crediting the what the trading account this will be the meaning for debiting the uh, income statement you will less it in the operating expense and this you will less it in the cost of sales once you're done with adding the purchases so that is it 
then uh, moving on for goods that are not insured, which is which are going to be on the next page. So for goods that are not insured, uh, when they are not yet paid, first of all, I mean these are for goods that are insured. When they are not when then when when you when you incur the loss, when you incur the loss or the yeah when you incur the loss of the goods, or in case they are stolen, first of all what you're going to do is debit the income. The debit the insurance receivable like the insurance company is supposed to pay you which is going to be a current asset in the balance sheet and then you credit the trading account so when you when when paid i told you it uh trading account here it means that you are going to less from this section here from this section this, that's how we are going to treat the stolen or lost goods and for this i just going to take to the balance sheet and and uh, you do what you insert it there as insurance receivable so when they are paid what happens you're going to debit your cash and bank because you're going to be receiving money from the insurance company and then you're going to credit the insurance receive account then uh now this is the example here this is what i was trying to mean when not yet paid you're going to for credit for credit why you're going to credit is because you're going to come on the Tied on the side of the trading account here and you list the stolen or lost goods as I've indicated here and on debiting this is the balance sheet you get to have your non-current assets and current assets then under current assets that's when you bring in the insurance receivable so that is for goods insured and goods that are not insured how you treat them in the single and the complete records then uh, moving on to the next uh, adjustments for the accruals now with adjustments for the accruals this is done to ascertain expense figure to be uh, changed in the profit to be charged in the profit and loss account now for this you want to adjust the expense figure hmm? to know what is my real expense that year so that you can treat it accordingly in the income statement now if you're having accrued expenses it's going to be a liability it's going to be payable meaning that you have expenses they have not yet paid for then accrued incomes that have not yet paid which is going to be an asset so you must receive it for prepaid expenses it means that you have overpaid for an expense for example electricity which will become an asset to you because it's like a receivable in case this money is not utilized then uh, prepaid in incomes now for prepaid incomes is like a liability because if at all you are given more income then you're supposed to receive in a particular year and you're supposed to conduct a service if at all you don't conduct that service when the period comes you have a liability you will be liable to do that service or that or pay that money in case you do not do the service so that is that this one is a liability asset asset and also this one is a what a liability so example five assuming you're having a, a salaries account and salaries account you're saying accrued salaries that means you didn't pay your workers as at first uh yeah you you opened up with these figures and accrued uh, accru accrued salaries and uh, at the end of the year you ended with this and the salaries paid are this so this is what you were able to pay in that particular year so if at all you want to 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 know what figure you're supposed to put in the income statement because this all occurred around there you're going to say salaries you're going to open up the salaries account but you're opening up a salaries account uh, but it's going to be having a balance both balance both forward on the credit side because this is an accrued uh, accrued salary like it is a liability an accrued salary so you meaning liabilities have a, a normal credit balance so that's why you're going to open up this figure this side and after you opening up this finger this side you go on and say what happened i only paid this in that year so you say cash that you paid to the workers it's what ten thousand then uh, what happened at the 31st I, I was ending with this figure so meaning if i'm to balance off this and this i'm going to get 16 which is this and i will be having five this side and i won't be having this figure here so if i'm not having it so the difference between this and this is going to be the 11 so the 11 which is going to equate to the 16,000 so 16,000 16,000 meaning my balance thing my balancing figure will be will be taken to the income statement so i say in income statement and it's this figure 
which I'm going to say salaries account. Salaries account under the operating expenses. Operating. Operating expenses. And I'm going to say, uh, and I bring in this the, and I bring in the salaries. Salaries. And to, this is going to be my salaries expense account. That this is what I I would have spent on salaries that particular year when I'm closing off. So this remaining amount will be just an. It will be the salaries that are accrued that I will take to the next period. This six thousand. It's what I will take to the next period as my what accrued expenses or salaries. So that is it. And uh, with that, I think you will be good to go. And uh, you just need to try out an example. And that's it with the uh, single and complete records. Thank you for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you very much.